Alright, before we begin this special episode of Stitch Method on Guitar Fundamentals, you might be asking yourself, why the scarf, Ian? And I'll tell you, because when you have a giant mosquito bite in your neck, and you go to film a YouTube video, you can't help but notice it. So, my wife did this. Let, you, let her know in the comments if you like the scarf with Stitch. Besides that, let's get to Guitar Fundamentals. Um, three easy steps for any beginner or intermediate guitar player to sound better and better uh, every time. Uh, the reason I want to present this uh, video is because in case you're camping with your family like I was over the weekend, or if you're just playing with people or family comes over and they say, hey, you play guitar, play something, these are some things that you can do to enhance your playing right away. But not only that, it's also how music totally works. It's also how the relationship between chords and melody work. So the more you study these kind of fundamental ideas, the better you're going to get. You can see all this stuff happening, excuse me, in any genre of music. It's all there. It all just depends on what tempo and uh, the kind of rhythm that it goes with. So with that being said, let's get to the first idea. Today we're going to be playing just with the G C major and D chord, uh, probably the most popular chord set of all time. Every campfire song is pretty much using uh, these chords. I'm going to show you, you can do this with any chords, but I'm going to show you how to do it with these chords. So the first thing you're going to do is start to throw in a, an alternating fifth bass line. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, the example is if you're just playing this stuff, and let's say you're playing with another person, and you just want to enhance your playing to give some sort of rhythmic dimension. Well, the first thing you're going to do is start to understand what do I mean, excuse me, what do I mean by five? Well, it's the fifth note of the chord, or the interval five. So in the key of G, so, or G chord, those notes are made up of G, B, and D, and it's that D that's the fifth. So you want to pluck the G string, then the chord, and then the D string. And this is going to give you this kind of like trotting type of bass line. So you're going to go from this, this. And so on and so on. And so you're probably like, oh my god, I know this. Well, in case you don't, you want to practice this, but keep watching this video. We're going to layer three easy concepts. So let me show you about that C chord. Now the C chord is interesting because you're playing a C here, and if you happen to like one of my favorite guitar players, Jerry Garcia, you're going to see him doing this all the time, which is play a C chord here, the notes are up on the screen, C, E, and G, with a G on that uh, um, third fret of the E string is our fifth. And so you can pluck this note here, strum the chord, and then just move that ring finger. Now when you're playing this with, with another guitar player, it's going to sound great. And so doing this by yourself makes it totally sound kind of like very, you know, horse trotty cowboy chords type style. But when you're playing with another player, it's kind of kind of like be in the mix. Now the D chord, I'm going to show you this. You have a D chord? notes of a D chord or D, F sharp, and A, and take a look at A is your 5, and lucky for us, we have an A string right above the D string, and so we can alternate. Now, the idea behind this is that the fifths of all these uh, chords are pure harmony notes. Uh, they don't really dictate the sound of the chord, and what I mean by that is you're not playing the major third or the minor third, which is the real sound of the chord. You're playing a, a harmony, and you find this in a lot of genres. And just in case you're wondering about the rhythm, you, gotta, you want to practice one and a two and a three and a four and a one. So you're plucking on the ones and twos. One and a two. You're also plucking up the threes and the fours. <laughs> so, so listen. I'm going to play a quick like uh, type of twelve bar blues campfire thing, but with alternating bass lines or the fifth bass line. Here we go.
Now, I know that was quite long, but I just want to show you that when you can really concentrate on hitting those bass lines, uh, the song starts to develop its own rhythm, and it sounds a little bit better than just better, excuse me, than just playing this. Uh, and so that's level one, the alternating the uh, fifth note of uh, the fifth interval bass line. Now, how do we get better? Well, this one that I'm going to drop on you is is probably I'm not going to lie to you the most important piece of how music works, which is you can now introduce the pentatonic of the chord you are on. All right. Now, for the people who watch Stitch Method and more of the advanced lessons, I mean, this is the secrets of like most of our favorite guitar players. And so you can do it in the simple method to get used to the idea. So let me show you. When you're on the G chord now, you want to play a G major pentatonic. And that is as simple as 0, 3, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 3. G major pentatonic. So now let me show you. But I'm going to show you in a cool way. I'm going to practice with my alternating bass line that I just did and then introducing the pentatonic like this. There. there was the fifth interval bass line with the pentatonic, and the rhythm I was doing was one and a two and a, and then pentatonic, one E and a two E and a, one and a two and a, one E and a two E and a, one. Okay, I'll go, I'll do the C right now. So for the C major, I'm going to keep those alternating bass lines going, and now I'm going to introduce uh, the C major pentatonic, and it's going to be zero three, zero three, zero two. 0, 2, 1, 3, 0, 3. Just in case you have any questions about how do I find those pentatonics, I'll be linking a video right about here someplace and also in the comment section and in the video description of how to find any pentatonic you want at any time. All right, and so we have our C chord. And so I have a C major pentatonic. I'm going to do the C chord for a little bit with the alternating bass line and the pentatonic. Let's see what it sounds like. Cool. Ooh, sorry, it just started thundering and lightning. Uh, I'm about to do the D chord. Here we go. So for the D chord, uh, we have the alternating bass line and the D major pentatonic in open position. is quite weird because the guitar ends here, which I'll do another video for guitar uh, fundamentals on. But long story short, 0, 2, 0, 2, 0, 2, 4, 2, 0, 3, 0, 2. So now, let's see if I can do the same thing in introducing some uh, D pentatonics. So there it is again. Now I'm putting chord tones on top of my alternating fifth bass line. All right, let's see if we can try this all together. Again, we're just kind of the layering approach, right? And so I'm going to play um, a shorter 12-bar blues, not as long. Um, it's got not going to really be a 12 bar blues, but a shorter version of this. Let's see if we can hear those sounds. So you hopefully heard playing those alternating bass lines and introdu introducing those pentatonics is already starting to sound good. The last level of advice that I will give you. Now you can't do what I'm about to do all the time. You got to use it like uh, with some taste and discretion, which is slide the minor third into the major third of the chord you're on. Now, if you're a longtime fan of Stitch Method, you're already going, okay, I got this. If you haven't seen this before, this move is probably another quintessential move into guitar solos and melodies, so you want to get used to the idea. So let's see it. Well, in a G chord, this B here is the major third, so it's not unheard of to slide into the B from the fret behind, which is the minor third. And you probably notice this very famous like blues, a, a bluegrass tag ending, like. 
that's where it comes from. Okay, so this B here, sliding into it from the B, the B flat, is gonna be huge. This gives, starts to give you a very uh, intense bluegrass sound, so you wanna be able to spot where the major thirds are uh, of this chord. Again, here's a major third here, slide into it. Now, the B here is the major third, but the problem is you can't slide into it, so you can take that third fret and slide into the fourth fret. So now listen for step one, the alternating bass line that I'm doing, step two, the pentatonic, and step three now, introducing the minor thirds, into the major thirds. You can really start to hear it shine. You can do the same thing for the C chord. Here's the C chord. That middle finger, boom, is that major third, one fret behind it. All right, ain't nothing wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with putting that major third in, minor third. Now for the D chord, interestingly enough, all right, this guy here, that's my major third, know it, okay? Minor third, here, look at the difference between a D minor and a D major, that's my minor third. So let's see if we can uh, put this all together with all of our newfound knowledge. Fifth bass lines, um, the pentatonics, and the minor major third moves. done today. Hopefully it's a simple idea. You definitely want to practice this stuff. I'm not lying to you when I say if you can think about all these things in different layers, you're going to be one awesome guitar player. But you want to go slow. Try it on acoustic right now because the acoustic rings. Uh, it's made to sound beautiful. And uh, so what you want to practice, again, putting the fifths in your bass lines. Once you're comfortable with that, comfortable, sorry, I say that word too quickly. Um, then you can move to putting the pentatonic for each chord in. And once you're comfortable with those two, start putting the minor third, major third slides in, and you'll really start to sound good really quickly. So these basic three steps can be done to any chord and any progression, but let's start here with G, C, and D for us beginners and intermediate players who just want to learn how it's done. So have fun with this. If you like this, please share, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon on another episode of Guitar Fundamentals with Stitch. Pow, pow.